everyone, my name is Nick Pett. I'm our Chief Evangelist here at Talon and with me. Mark Balkanetti, Director of Technical Product Marketing. Uh, so we're here at Black Shirt Brewery down in the Art District of River North in Denver, Colorado. Um, fine selection of just all red ales, which is a specialty of Black Shirt Brewery. Uh, they've been around for about five years now. Uh, Family run company. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, two brothers and a, and a wife, I believe, running the company. Yeah, yeah, and they uh, we got to spend some time, and they might show up in a later segment of this, uh, talking about just how long it took to perfect this process. And it was very interesting to hear, you know, just hundreds of barrels before they found the right recipe. And I was just thinking in my head, I was like, well, yeah, whoever gets their code right the first time, I, I know I don't. You know, I was thinking in my head, Nick, how I've already had two drinks from my beer, and you've only had one. Okay. It's okay. All right, Mark. Let's, <laughs> there were a lot of comments from both... <laughs> internal employees as well as some of the viewers uh, my lack of drinking so grab your beer I'm going to solve one of these right now so <laughs> a new addition to this event will be the big data chug <laughs> um, and this one we'd like to go out to Cloudera uh, on their recent announcement of Altis at Talon we're very excited uh, for the opportunity to work together with them cheers so, to that and drink up We'll have to have video proof on who won that one. Yeah, it's gonna need a photo finish. Woo. All right. So what are we uh, what are we talking about today? All right. So today we're talking about Spark, right? Um, we we've had a lot of people ask about you know like hey you mentioned it in the last episode, what is it? Why should, is it important? Should we step back and talk about just Hadoop in general and how Spark fits into the whole Hadoop yes. uh, framework? Yes, I think that'd be a good idea. Excellent. So where should we start? So I mean, if we if we look at Hadoop and the the components that really made Hadoop. So you have your, your file system, which is HDFS. HDFS, that's pretty much that's the core to really to everything that happens in uh, the Hadoop world is yeah. is around the file system, and then everything's kind of built on top of that. Right, yeah, so that's where HBase and some of the other things. And, and HDFS is a, a highly distributed file system. So when you put your files on HDFS, they're dispersed and put onto different nodes within the cluster for yeah. redundancy and, and repeatability. Right, so I mean, it would make sense that naturally as this uh, big data problem evolved in terms of how to process it, they want to take advantage of, of that infrastructure, right? So outside of just HDFS, and we kind of mentioned HBase, which is one of those built on top, right? The other big component out of that is Yarn, right? Which is just yet another resource manager. Or Yarn. Right? Yeah. yeah um, you got it. Pretty much. Um, <laughs> and so from that, like between those two pieces, right, it really fostered the the incubator for a new way of processing big data. Right, and then the first real processing framework was, that came out with Hadoop was MapReduce. Right. Uh, and MapReduce runs on Yarn uh, and runs on other platforms as well right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so within that, um, you kind of mentioned because it ran in, in on disk and had tons of I.O. issues that were associated with it. I didn't mention that, did you? Oh, well, you know. So MapReduce, should we explain how MapReduce yes, works? Yes, we probably should. So MapReduce, I think this is data, and you're putting it into the HDFS, so I'm pouring my data into different nodes. All right. While Nick drinks, finally. You wait, man. You wait. So MapReduce, in order to do any processing, it has to put it into memory from the different nodes, and that's the mapping. Every person who drinks beer is just crying. Yeah, it's crying, and uh, I'm, I'm not drinking this, I'm explaining a concept, Nick. All right. So, so then I process it, and maybe I'm just doing an aggregate so that it's all done, and then I have to pour it back out to the different nodes, and as you can see, this takes a really long time to constantly do over and over. Right. Right? So. So that was MapReduce, lots of I.O., lots of writing in and out, where Spark, uh, it keeps it all in memory. So right. it would stay in memory from all the nodes all the time and only needs to write back out to disk on occasion on certain type of computations that are needed or outputs or insights or from the process. So therefore, Spark runs more natively in memory, where MapReduce runs uh, it constantly is writing back to the file system, the HDFS, uh, for all the different steps. So you have to do map reduce and map it and then reduce, map and reduce, map and reduce, map and reduce. I, I think we get it. Oh, okay. I think we get it. All right. Right. So I'm, I'm processing this data as yeah. we speak. And that's what happens when you have data loss is right there. We have some data loss on that memory node. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> no problem. All right. So we, we've talked about um, 
MapReduce and, and now Spark. And, and you brought up some interesting pieces, right? You know, obviously the, the evolution from a framework that really processed in memory to now one that, or sorry, uh, HD, uh, MapReduce pro processing on disk to now Spark, which is processing in memory. So, you know, it, it, from an infrastructure point of view, uh, that, that might make a, a change. Whereas, uh, you know, so one of the benefits of Spark that we haven't necessarily highlighted immediately right now, but still valuable, is the fact that, hey, even running Spark on disk is still a, a 5x improvement than, than MapReduce. So it gives... Yeah, on disk, it's actually 10. They've 10? proven 10 times uh, faster performance. Perfect. So And 100 times when you talk about just memory. Right. So, so. It, it definitely provides... Uh, organizations the ability to at least start experimenting with Spark now while they make the infrastructure changes because it's going to be a little more memory intensive. Yeah, and you know when uh, Hadoop and, and MapReduce first came out, a lot of the distribu uh, distribution companies and they were selling Hadoop and selling their distributions. You know, the, the big thing was, hey, you can run this on commodity hardware, mm -hmm. and you know with MapReduce, absolutely, but with Spark, it's a little bit different. You need to beef up the memory on them, and, and the processing is a little faster. So. So it's a little more than commodity hardware now, right. but uh, you know, but you still can run your Spark uh, processes and your clusters and your commodity hardware. You just may need to beef up the memory on on them eventually. So, but it's still a very inexpensive way to get some multi-parallel processing or MPP system, you know, using the Apache Hadoop environment. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, speaking about just uh, Spark in general. I mean, we've been talking about the framework itself, but it's it's very in it's beneficial that. You know, it, it provides a number of, of actual API languages, so either Python, Java, Scala. Um, and then within that, you know, we've seen some evolution within just how the API works. So if we kind of look back at you know, Spark 1.0, you really only had um, RDDs, which is the Resilient Distributed Data Sets. Yes. Right? Um, and now, it, it, with 2.0, we kind of see this new data frame. Well, data frames are always there, but now this, this you know, evolution towards data sets, which is, you know, still using RDDs internally, but providing ways of even uh, you know, obfuscating some of the more complex uh, situations you got in when trying to manage those RDDs. And, and there's been some proof, I think Databricks had a blog out there that we were reading um, as we were coming up to this about just around the performance. Yeah, and uh, the differences in, in uh, the data set over just pure data uh, RDDs is the much, uh, much more compressed. The, yeah. the data the storage or the memory usage with a data set is is what, you know less than half of what a pure RDD is. So, so definitely some advantages on, on what's coming up in Spark you know 2.0 and Spark 3.0 whenever that's out. So yeah, yeah, some huge advantages and and help processing your data uh, with with Spark in the Hadoop environments. So totally totally better. And I can't let Nick get ahead of me. So. Man, this this porter is on point. It's pretty good. Um, yeah. So we we've, we've covered. Dupe. We've covered Spark. Um, and then you, one other big difference we should talk about before we move on or yeah. finish up, whatever we're doing next, yeah, drink right. some more. Uh, you know, Spark uh, does also streaming processing, so right. uh, where MapReduce is only batch. So Spark does both batch and streaming, mm -hmm. and meaning that you can have data continually streaming into a Spark flow, a uh, Spark stream, and process uh, micro batches of that so take a little bit out as, as it's flowing and do you know analytics on that data as it goes uh, through the, the the whole cycle of, of the processing within spark so so that's a, another big advantage that spark has over MapReduce. right um, and and spark is one of the leading streaming uh, processing systems in the big data world today uh, there are several others that are, are around that are also you know worth mentioning like Flink and Storm is still hanging around. Yeah, yeah I mean, that, uh, sure, that in but, itself would be a whole episode on that. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, so, it's, it's a good point that you called that out. I mean, and, and if we think about it, so not only just the types of processing that Spark can do, either batch or streaming, but if we also then look at where that type of processing can reside. I mean, you know, you have the technologies, the, the main distributions, so MapR, Hortonworks, and Cloudera, being able to run this stuff within their distributions, but then also the cloud vendors like Amazon, Microsoft, and Google also having a way to run Spark natively within their clouds. Right? Absolutely, with a lot of different advantages for every one of them. So, And now Cloudera, you mentioned at the beginning, has yep. uh, Altus, which is their cloud offering on Amazon, mm -hmm. uh, which I got to play with uh, a couple weeks ago before it was even announced uh, from 
either Talent or Cloudera about uh, our adventure with them. Uh, very cool platform, uh, very exciting to, yeah. to use. Uh, and you get to all the advantages of Amazon Web Services with Cloudera's clustering technology. So it's uh, Altus is also very exciting and something we may be talking about in the future more. So. I suspect, yeah. I'd love to have the guys from Cloudera on. I'm certainly sure we can find someone there that likes to have a beer. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, you know, obviously this has been our, our segment on Spark and Hadoop. Um, thank you again to Blackshirt Brewery for allowing us to set up, put this together kind of last minute, and uh, have a fine selection of flights. Uh, if there is a, uh, a section or a concept that you'd like to have us talk about, or maybe in a brewery down in Denver, you'd like to have us you know, interview the, the tap master or something like that, please put it in the comments section. Uh, as always, this is a pleasure talking to you guys. Uh, I'm Nick. I'm Mark. Thanks for joining us. Yep.